Hello everyone, this demo will show you how to make and set basic or standard rivets. Rivets are connecting devices and they are also call connections, meaning that they are used to join different pieces of material without heat. So why not just solder? One reason would be that you are connecting non-metallic materials that do not withstand heat, or maybe it's just because you want to add interest to a piece. And there are many different kinds of rivets, but that's for another demo. As an example, I will use your riveting exercise. These are the materials you've been given, a piece of brass and some copper wire. You also have a drill bit. 1.6 millimeter. Please note that because this is just for practice, there's only one piece of metal, but in reality, rivets are used to connect two or more pieces of metal or other materials. Riveting or setting a rivet is done with a hammer. You can use either a riveting hammer or a ball pin hammer. Here we have two kinds of riveting hammers. They are slightly different, but they both have a wedge-shaped face that we use to set the rivet, and a flat side that can be used to even it out. You can also use a ball-pin hammer, the ball-shaped face of the hammer, or even the rounded side of a chasing hammer. You also need cutting uh, pliers, cutters, and a uh, steel block, bench block, and you also need a center punch file and your flex shaft and drill bits. For this practical exercise, you need to make at least 10 rivets. The first step would be to drill holes where you will insert a section of copper wire. That's the rivet. The wire doesn't need to be a need because it is copper, which is a softer metal. For an actual project, the piece would be completely finished and riveting would be the last step. So it has to be done very carefully to avoid damaging your piece. The first step is to drill holes. You've been given a drill bit that matches the diameter of the wire, 1.6 millimeter, but it is too big to be used first to drill a hole. So we need to start with a smaller drill bit and increase the size incrementally. In this example, I use three drill bits. Uh, always measure your drill bits with your calipers to double check the size. The diameter of the wire should also be 1.6, exactly the same as the drill bit. So these are my three drill bits. I will start with the small size, increase the size to finish with 1.6. For flexible shaft safety, uh, please check my handouts on Moodle. Always wear eye protection when using the flex shaft or hammer. So the steps for the first step, you need to mark the location of the rivets on your workpiece. I've done that already. Place your workpiece on a steel block and with a center punch and a chasing hammer, make a small dent with just one blow of the hammer. For a larger size drill bit over one millimeter, you need to drill smaller holes first. For example, if the final hole needs to be 1.6, I would first drill a hole of about 0.8 millimeters, then a slightly larger one of about 1.2, and then finish with 1.6. Insert the bit in the handpiece and tighten with a chuck key, and always test the bit before drilling. Always lubricate the bit as well. This extends the life of the drill bit and it's also uh, safer. 
make sure you keep the drill bit perfectly vertical at 90 degrees to the plate. And now I'm going to uh, repeat the process with the next biggest size of drill bit. Again, test the bit or the accessory before you use it. Make it turn a little bit and it should turn true uh, without being wobbly. And always lubricate the drill bit. Hold on to your workpiece when drilling, that's also very important. Now I will uh, go on to the next uh, biggest size of drill bit and that's, that is the 1.6 millimeter drill bit, what I need for my wire. So same size as the copper wire, 1.6. I have checked, double checked with my calipers. And you, you can see how I use my pinky finger as a tripod to stabilize my hand when I'm drilling. It gives me a little bit more control. So that's it. I've drilled uh, the holes, they are all the, the right size. Oh, one more to go. And uh, safety, another safety reminder, always remove the bit or, or the accessory you are working with. We are now going to insert the wire into the hole to make a rivet. You can use either a riveting hammer or a ball pin hammer. For this one, I will use the ball pin hammer. This is a rivet here already set. You can see it has a slightly domed shape. This is a standard rivet. It looks exactly the same on the back of the plate. Let's take our wire and we should try to keep it as straight as possible. This would be much easier to work with. And then we cut a small piece with the pliers. Because these cutters are not flush, I will have to file the end of the wire to make it perfectly square. Now we are inserting the filed end of the wire into the hole. It should fit very tightly. It should be very snug. We let it stick out a little bit on the other side. In this example, about one millimeter or a little less. It should be snug enough that the wire will stay in and not fall out. So this is what it looks like. Now we'll cut with the pliers again, the other 
end of the wire. It will need to be filed again. And we want it to stick out the same amount as before. And it's very important to file the end square or the, or the rivet will not uh, be uh, even and symmetrical. So one small adjustment and one last check to make sure the two sides are even. On your actual workpiece, you might want to protect the surface of the metal with masking tape, but it is not necessary for our exercise. So, after this last check, we are ready to set the rivet. That means we're going to hammer each end of the wire to flare it and this will lock the rivet in the metal. This is the pattern that shows you the direction of the hammer blows. And we need to place the uh, workpiece on the steel block for this, for this step. We hammer with the ball shaped end of the ball pin hammer going around the top of the rivet again following the, uh, the diagram the previous diagram and what we do is hammer lightly each end of the rivet we keep flipping over from one side to the other until the head of the rivet is flared and the rivet is set or secure. It is very important to work very lightly with the light touch. Basically, it's the, the weight of the hammer itself that should be enough to do the job. There is no need to apply a lot of force. This could bend the wire and the rivet would be lopsided. So keep turning your workpiece as you hammer the top of the rivet. And keep flipping. Both sides need to be the same shape and the same size. They need to be perfectly even. So now we'll finish, finish up and we'll have a last look. So we have a nice dome shape with a light uh, dimple texture. Now let's see how we set a rivet with the riveting hammer. I have already inserted the wire into the hole. You follow the same steps, but the direction of the hammer blows is different. As you can see here, we use the wedge shaped end of the riveting hammer. And with the hammer, we are hammering crosswise. The workpiece is on the steel block as before. And we need to turn the piece to strike the wire in one direction and then we turn it again to strike across and we keep flipping sides. So let's speed up the video now. And let's have a closer look. Let's continue hammering crosswise, always 
which spreads the metal evenly to flare the top of the rivet. And we keep flipping from side to side. Okay, and now we are going to finish up. And let's have a closer look and compare the two rivets. So on the left, the ball pin hammer, and on the right, the one we just did was the riveting hammer. You see that the rivet done with the ball pin has a nice domed shape and is bright and shiny. The other one is a little flatter. So this was how you make a basic rivet. There are several other types of rivets, flush, tube rivets, all kinds of decorative rivets. Have fun riveting and thanks for watching.